Hello mate, welcome back. In this video, we're going to continue to expand on what we worked on in the last video. We're going to add some new variables and work on some more code. Before I get started, a huge thank you to everyone for subscribing and hitting that notification icon. That really helps me out. And an even bigger thank you to my members and patrons. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen at the end of the video. Incidentally, if you are interested in supporting the channel, please feel free to become a member by hitting join next to the subscribe button or you can visit the Patreon in the description down below. Let's jump on into this then. First thing I want to do is come into our variable defines file and we're going to create a couple more variables. So we've got our location, our old location, chapter sequence. We've also got our click type that we need to define. So we can set that here by saying default click type equals and it's just going to be an empty string we've got our notification variable that we need to set so we've got to say default notification equals false and we're doing this to make sure that they definitely save when we save the game now this is one that some of you may have become a cropper on in since the last video if you've tried to run your code you've probably come up against this which is going to be the solution to it default tt equals tooltip and it's going to be empty there we go uh, so the next thing we want to do are oh, where we're we going to need to create a couple of variables for uh, so default nav menu if you remember that variable needed to be declared nav menu equals false tip screen and tips text are there i think i'm going to create a slow dissolve transition so slow dissolve this just allows us to um transition a little bit more slowly from an image to, or to a black screen or something so we're going to say this is going to be simply dissolve over five seconds and it has to be 5.0 there we go cool beans so the next thing we need to do is create a list for npcs and i'm going to actually take this these two out of here Control x i'm going to put them at the bottom because i want my lists to be defined at the bottom so we're going to say default uh, npcs and that's going to be an empty list as well oh no we need to actually use that as an empty list and then i'm going to have a a menu with a default va value in it so I'm going to define that now as well default computer menu equals and that's going to be an empty list as well and then what I'm actually going to do is just here in the init variables label I'm going to say uh, computer menu dot append nothing dot 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 end cool beans that'll make sense later on again once we've got into some of the more nuts and bolts of things but essentially we're now going to create a couple of npcs using our npc class so we're going to say uh, npcs dot append and we know that we've got npcs here npc and then this character is going to be uh, let's just call it uh, i don't know laura uh, it's going to be a small L for that one because this is the normal name, Laura. And then this is the nice name, so this is going to be Laura with a capital L. Her location is going to be in the kitchen and she is active. True. So now we can create a couple more, but I think I'll just... We're going to stick with one NPC for now just to keep life nice and simple because when we create the character screen, that's when we're going to have to start thinking about rendering some images. So we'll just make sure we save that. And now we can work on our character screen, which is going to be a really simple screen again, but we have to make sure we do it right. So we're going to create a new file in our screens folder. And this one's going to be character screen.rpy. Boom. Now we can say screen character underscore screen. Uh, that's not helpful there we go <laughs> typos for the win so we're going to say 4q in npcs so we're using that list that we've just created and we're going to say if 
Q dot location equal equals location. If we, if the character is in the same location as us, i.e. they should be visible on the screen and is active. So if they're not dead or just not yet active as a character. Now we can say if Q dot uh, avatar. Cool. So what we're going to do now, this is, I need to explain this. So we're going to have animated avatars where possible. However, in order to keep the game file size low, we may need to use some that are not animated. So in order to do that, we need to actually check whether or not the file that we're using as our button is an animation or if it's not. And the easiest way to do that is say if q.avatar minus seven, if the last seven characters of this file name are not annie.png. I need to actually check that, that is a string. Then we are going to create an image button and it's going to be q.avatar as the, Im uh, oh no, hang on a minute. Good Lord, I'm having a brain fart here. Idle is going to be q.avatar. Hover is also going to be q.avatar. And we're going to say action is going to be set variable. Click type, if you remember that variable from the million times I've talked about it. And we're going to set it to character. So we're basically telling the game we've clicked on a character and then we're going to return q.name. So we are going to, uh, we're saying we've clicked on a character and it's this character. Focus mask. God damn, mask equals true. That just means that we can have a 1920 by 1080 p file that only registers if we click on an opaque pixel. It just means that positioning these characters is going to be a lot easier. Hovered TT dot action. It's going to be Q dot nice. No, nice name. So if we hover over the character, the tooltip is going to display their nice name. Nice and simple. So now we need to say else. And we're going to create an image button again, but this time it's going to be an image button with a twist. The idle is going to be something. Hover is going to be something. Focus mask is still going to be true. And we're going to have to change that big F to a little F for F sake. Action is still going to be basically these three items here are going to be the same. So we can just go. So that's all going to be the same. This is the bit that's going to be different. So this is going to be if the image file that we're trying to use is an animation file, which we've denoted by adding Annie at the end of the name. Anim.film strip. It's going to be q.avatar. Now we're going to set our game to be 1920 by 1080. So the image file is going to be 1920 by 1080 as well. We're going to have it four by eight. So the uh, the film strip animation file that we create is going to have four across and eight down. So lots of frames to play with. Uh, the time that each frame is going to appear on the screen, I'm going to say will be, uh, I'm going to say 1 point, 0.125. Uh, no, actually, no, I'm going to say 0.08333. It's going to be 32 frames and it will loop. Perfect. Now we can simply copy that line of code there and paste it there. Save that. That is the character screen finished. I think that about covers it for this episode, guys. In the next one, we're going to work a little bit more on the engine and start populating it with bits and bobs. Uh, thanks very much for watching. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I hope you found that informative and entertaining. I will see you in the next one, but until then, you take damn good care of yourselves, all right? Bye-bye.